There, there we go. There we go. It's green. Best uh, player you played with on the Shamrocks ever was who? Best player? Paul. Yeah, probably my brother. You know, I can yeah. say that easy enough. What would he say? He'd probably say the same thing himself. No. <laughs> Hi, I'm Gary Gate, longtime lacrosse player, coming up on uh, Game On with uh, Jeff and Paul. That's oh, yeah. it. That's it. That's good. Let's get it done. All right. It's Game On. Tonight, Tiger who? G. Van Sahota looks to be the next big thing in golf. Rising tide, Victoria's Ryan Cochran looks poised for great things in London. And we have Gary Gate in the sports cage. He's a legend. Believe it. It's Game On. is brought to you by Jenner Chevrolet Buick GMC. Here for you and in your community on the Old Island Highway. Hello and welcome to Game On. Jeff King is hiding somewhere, but don't <laughs> you worry. He will make an appearance on tonight's show. But in the meantime, we have Magic Mike Walker sitting in. And Mikey, we have another solid show tonight. Yes, yeah, sir. It's an honor to sit in the master's seat. I'll try not to screw it up. We have <laughs> lots to get to tonight from lacrosse to triathlon. But first, Paul, we're going to start with a young golf prodigy. Yeah, not me. Not me. Yes, and golf is one of those games that takes years to perfect. You can play and practice all you want, but that darn ball always seems to find the sand trap. But there's a seven-year-old Victoria boy seems to be debunking that trend, and he's looking to take his perfect swing to the top. Like a, uh, like a little toy, like a Batman toy. At first glance, G. Van Sahota looks like a pretty typical seven-year-old. He likes to laugh and play games, but there's one game in particular he's pretty good at. One look at G. Van's golf swing, and it's very evident the kid's got some game, which isn't a huge surprise since he's been playing since he was four. Um, I, I used to play baseball. I, I didn't find baseball as much as fun as the sport. All the way from Canada, G. Van Sahota. Yeah. All right, G. Van. G. Van's swing has taken him all over North America. He just returned from the Callaway World Junior Golf Tournament in San Diego. But what inspires a young boy to take up golf? Well, he wears the answer on his hat. Um, Tiger Woods. So right now I'd like to meet Tiger Woods and his father, Earl Woods. <laughs> Tiger was also deemed a golf prodigy at a young age. Here he is at two years old on the Mike Douglas Show. And while Jivon has a dream of one day breaking Tiger's records, his coach John Randall doesn't think it's unattainable. It's obviously very early, too early to tell, but you know, as long as we can keep golf to be fun and as long as he still enjoys the, the practice and the play, then you know, he's obviously got talent, so um, he's, he could have a great future if, if he decides that he still likes golf as he gets older. Jivon is certainly one of those once-in-a-lifetime students for Randall, but the academy director wants to make sure the game remains fun. He is seven after all. I try hard not to really think too far ahead. We're just trying to keep it fun and, and, uh, and guide him along as best we can with, with you know, a slow and steady pace towards being a good player when he's older and, and most importantly, a good human. In a recent three-round tournament, Jivon performed the amazing feat of hitting every green in regulation. And while some golfers wait their entire lives to get an eagle, Jivon already has, well, we'll let him tell you. I've had tons of eagles. I've already had five. With a look and smile that's eerily similar to that of a young Tiger Woods, Jivon Sahota is definitely on the right track, and he's well ahead of just getting into the swing of things on the golf course. This portion of Game On brought to you by Sopranos Bar and Grill, where fans gather before and after the game. Yeah, that kid can play. Well, last weekend, Victoria's Brent McMahon picked up his first triathlon gold medal at the ITU World Cup in Hungary. The 30-year-old has waited a long time to sit atop the podium, and it couldn't come at a better time heading into London. You on, Mark? McMahon had a solid outing last weekend, including a 31-minute 10K to finish the competition. And while you'd think he'd go out and celebrate... Instead, he returned home just a few days later to get some work done on his aching muscles. The 30-year-old was sidelined over the last year and a half with an injury to his knee, but now he's back and feeling good and looks poised to make a serious run at Olympic gold. 
to get my first World Cup win and my first podium of my career. And I've come come close. I was fourth back in uh, 2007, but um, you know to actually get on the podium and then do it with a win was uh, pretty awesome. That was also something I learned while I was off for a year and a half was was how much of a passion I have for triathlon, and you know I I just truly love the sport and everything that it surrounds it. Good luck, Brent. All right, it's time to check out what's going on in the world of amateur sports in a little segment we like to call Island Shoutout. Double uh, point. Well, hockey season just around the corner, which means lots of hockey camps, and this guy <laughs> having a tough time with the pylon. Oh, Finally man. gets it off of him. He's good to go. That looked hard. But it's still <laughs> summer, Mike, and Clive Butler doing some kite sailing. Check out this hang time. And he's going to stick it. He's still enjoying the nice weather. Yeah, but I disagree, Paul. Hockey is what? here. And, uh, yeah, a shout-out to Comox goalie Mike Herringer, who is the lone Islander at the Royals Development Camp this week. Stop at everything, Mike. You just like him because he has the same name as you. Yeah, that's All true, right. too. Another chance to win a CFL <laughs> package from your friends at Game On. There it is. Return airfare from Vic to Van on beautiful Halijet and tickets to a Lions game. Very nice. To so register, just send an email to gameon at checknews.ca. By the way, Paul, Helijet is fares as low as 125 bucks right now. I did know that. All right, coming up, we jump to the pool with Victoria boy Ryan Cochran to talk about his Olympic dreams. And we have a quick shift with the one and only Dave Cutler, Super Toe, joins us on the Super Show. It's awesome. After the break. Stay here. Welcome back to Game On. Make sure you stick around for our sports cage when Jeff King's back. We find talks him. to lacrosse legend Gary Gate in the sports cage. Yeah, Cleve Dean saw also trapped in the cage tonight. <laughs> but first, it's time to put the speedo on. Mike, you got it on? Yeah. There it is. Perfect. Thanks. We're talking a little swimming. Yeah, and when it comes to swimming in this town, nobody makes a splash quite like Ryan Cochran. And now the local boy is back in town and gearing up for a run at the London Olympics. 2008 Olympian Ryan Cochran has returned to the water at Commonwealth Place. The Victorian native is finally back at home after a whirlwind summer in the pool. Cochran took a pair of silver medals at the World Championships in Beijing last month and is now just taking some time to catch his breath. We had about two weeks off after the World Championships and uh, it's, it's great because I think you need the time to bounce back a little bit and you know get a little time off and time to enjoy you know summer in itself. Seems like with all the traveling the two weeks goes by pretty quick. But that doesn't mean the 22 year old wasn't working while away from the sport. We went and saw the Olympic venues after um, China and so just being able to see London as a city was fantastic and I think that'll really help us you know going into next year and knowing what to expect. And Cochrane will take any advantage he can heading towards next summer's Olympics, hoping to build on a golden performance at last year's Commonwealth Games. For London, I really hope to, you know, have some races that I can really be proud of. Um, you know, racing the, and, you know, touching the wall at the end of your race and knowing that you couldn't have put anything more into it and that you have no regrets. So that's my goal going to London. Um, I really want to race, you know, better than I ever have and, you know, have the best year of training for that. That training is where Victoria comes back into the picture, putting Cochran right at home as he strives towards the podium in London. It's exciting. I think we have a fantastic group here in Victoria, and uh, we're really going to push each other the whole year. He is pretty good at swimming. All right, it's time for this week's edition of Quick Shift. Yes, and since Jeff King is away this week, we decided to jump into the archives and pull out a gem he did with CFL legend Dave Cutler. Yeah, Paul, here we are with the Quick Shift. I have the legendary CFL legend, and... Vancouver Island legend for that matter, Dave Cutler with us right now. And Dave, I know you were born in Bigger, Saskatchewan. Tell everyone what the sign says on your way into Bigger. New York is big, but this is bigger. <laughs> Which is a fantastic sign. Uh, your best CFL memory? 81 Grey Cup. Uh, best uh, sport you enjoy outside of football? Baseball. Your uh, given name is Dave, but some people refer to you as Super Toe. Do you think you're more like uh, Super Dave Osborne or Toe Blake? Toe Blake. <laughs> Slow and old. <laughs> Your worst job growing up? Uh, picking rocks in the backyard. Really? On the yeah. farm? No, in uh, 1200 Burnside West. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> there you have it. Uh, any movie ever made you cry and which one? Cool Hand Luke. Really? Favorite band? 
blood, sweat, and tears. Yep. Uh, toughest player you ever played against in the CFL? Bill Baker. Yes. Uh, toughest player you ever played with on the Eskimos? Dan Kepley. Most embarrassing moment in your football career? <laughs> this is true. Yeah. I had diarrhea and had to leave the sideline and went into the Queen's bathroom. <laughs> no crap. Uh, no, yeah. <laughs> I know that you just turned 65. I want to know what the top thing on your bucket list is. Uh, 66. 66. <laughs> and Dave, this quick shift brought to you by? David Robert Stewart Cutler. <laughs> Super toe. Super <laughs> awesome. All right. It's time to buckle up. It's time to separate men from the boys. It's our plays of the week. Plays of the Week is brought to you by Spank It Sports, BC's largest selection of soccer, rugby, and football stuff. Well, let's start with some dancing. Little League World Series, Aruba facing Chinese Taipei, and this kid from Aruba nice. just wants to dance, and he's got the moves, too. He does have the moves. This kid should have moved. Takes the fastball to the head. He would be okay. Gives the Ouch. double thumbs up. <laughs> got to check out this home run from the Canada-Venezuela game. It's a home run, but the guy in the stands makes the one-handed catch on the cell phone. Now, that's multitasking. Yeah, Blue Jays in Seattle this week. Langley's Brett Lowry playing in front of friends and family, and he makes the border weight worth it. The solo shot to left. This kid's full value, Mike. Yeah, no question. Let's might go down as the best invention of all time, the <laughs> yes. beer cooler scooter. Not only can he do wheelies, but he can refuel on the trip as well. Yeah, that has DUI written all over it. Rich Harden bringing the heat this week in Oakland. He starts knocking off Blue Jays like he was skeet shooting and they were clay <laughs> pigeons. Yeah, I said it. Yeah, BC Lions won it. their second game of the year on Friday, <laughs> dominating the Eskies. It was thanks to G. Roy Simon who tied the Lions all-time touchdown record and celebrated like Superman. All right, to hockey, and the Royals arrived in Victoria this Wait week. No, no, not those Royals, Mike. The Victoria Royals. There they are, development camp underway. That was clever. Get excited about <laughs> Joe Hicketts. This kid can dangle. All right, how about this? Some golfers loaded a boat with TNT <laughs> and took shots. This guy apparently hit the boat. He's pretty excited about it. Yeah, why is he so excited? Did he win the lottery? <laughs> All right, so. Mavericks playoff. Dodgers playing the Braves. They win with a walk-off single from Tennyson's own Bobby Scott. They celebrate with the Gatorade shower. <laughs> that a boy. boy, Bobby. All uh, right, don't forget your chance to win a CFL package from your friends here at Game On. Return airfare from Victoria to Vancouver on beautiful Helijad and tickets to an upcoming Leo's game. That's right. To register, just send us an email to gameon at checknews.ca. All right, coming up next, we uh, take, the, take a rest here as Jeff King and Cleve Dean saw interview lacrosse legend Gary Gaint. But first, here's a look at some island standings, Paul. It's my line. Island standings are brought to you by Robbins Parking, proudly supporting local community and events. Game On's Sports Cage is brought to you by Country Grocer. You'll feel like family. Welcome back to Game On. You're in the sports cage, and I don't know, we've lost Paul Hasem somewhere, but we have a great replacement in the Dean of Sports on the island, Cleve Dean Saw, the uh, sports writer from the Times Colonist. Thanks for joining us again. How many times on the show for you now, Cleve? Oh, about three or four, I think. Okay. Yeah. Then I'll let you introduce our guest, I guess. Well, here is, uh, in my opinion, the greatest lacrosse player to ever play, along with his uh, twin brother, uh, Paul is Gary Gate, of course. Yeah. And I got to tell you, I read somewhere in, in some Eastern paper, somebody described John Grant Jr. as the greatest player of all time. And I'm thinking, like, no, can't be. Ooh. I was going to actually write that guy. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Man, you got it wrong. Right? What do you say when someone says to you, uh, greatest lacrosse player of all time? I mean, that's. That's pretty large. That's pretty big. I just take it as a complete compliment. I certainly yeah. remember uh, the days, the uh, you know, first time me and Cleve back in the day and being a kid and going up and getting an opportunity to play for the Shamrocks at like 16. We're talking about the first story I ever did on him. He's 16 years old. Him and Paul got called up to what was in Esquimalt Legion. And remember Fred Wooster, the uh, manager, telling me, he goes, you got to watch these guys. And I go, no, seriously, you got to be out there tonight. <laughs> at 16. Yeah. You go, and I, I go, yeah, OK. I heard a little bit about it, so I go out there. And I'm going like, and they put on a show that night. It was unbelievable. I think, the, you know, Gary got three goals. Paul got uh, four goals and five assists, something. And they were 16 years old in junior. I mean, wow. playing against 20-year-olds, right? And yeah. it was just absolutely amazing. And I thought, holy crap, <laughs> these guys are really, really good. And it was just the first, uh, the first taste of the gates. And, of course, uh, yeah, the rest is lacrosse history. And I guess as a kid, you know, uh, you, know you aspired to be on the Shamrocks. That was probably your goal growing up was to one day be on the Victoria Shamrocks. Absolutely. I, I lived and breathed lacrosse. And, and 
you know, I had uh, Ron Groucho McNeil as my coach that really uh, inspired me to, you know, take my game to the next level. You know, really, I, I, my, my, I thank my parents because they, they, they saw that we had a passion for the game of lacrosse and, and they found ways for us to, to play, you know. The teams, I, know, I remember in Victoria, stopped traveling to Vancouver because they didn't want to, uh, the expense and the travel when we were real young. And, and my dad got together with Jim Hartshorn and they, they started Sea Spray Lacrosse, which was, uh, you know, not a sandwich, not a Victoria, but a, kind of a hybrid of the best players that wanted to go play against the best players in Vancouver. Right. And that really was a jump start to, uh, uh, you know, a long career in lacrosse and, and having that opportunity. And, you know, I, I always say I take a little bit from each player I've yeah. ever played with or met or watched and, uh, and learn something from it. So, you know, Victoria had so much to offer with so many, so many great players, you know, the, again, uh, most people don't know, but, you know, the Vi Victoria really got a uh, boost back uh, in the 70s when the, one of the pro leagues uh, floundered in the U.S. Right. And the players were banned from playing in Ontario. And all of a sudden, guys like Ivan Thompson and Ron McNeil and all the Eastern players came back, uh, came had to here. come west to play because they wouldn't, they wouldn't allow them to play back in Ontario. And it was one of the greatest things, for, I think, for Western lacrosse to really elevate its level of play and make it competitive. Uh, across the country so you know and, and I was a recipient of watching these players play yeah and getting to know them and uh, you know become friends lifelong with them. friends playing with some of them and yeah <laughs> you know <laughs> I was young they were older but uh, and, then, and then everything reversed oh, I now I'm kept the coming out of retirement oh, oh, my god. The young oh guys. god this year I played with guys that uh, weren't born when I started playing in the pro <laughs> league so that's always interesting and then, you know, you went on to, to Syracuse, and I mean, that's really, you know, you got to play NCAA, you got the scholarship, uh, you, your brother, Tom Marichak went down there, and really, that's where sort of you really were noticed, and that's when all the magic started to happen as far as, uh, <clears throat> you know, the beginning of your big career. Yeah, I, you know, I just love to play lacrosse, and I, I, I continued to come back here and play junior yeah. for the Esquimalt Legion, and... Uh, you know, we during your Syracuse days? Oh, yeah. yeah. During, during the Syracuse days, we were chasing our, our Minto Cup. And Finally we took won five it in tries. Uh, five tries. Oh, really? won it I think yeah, it's yeah. a 1988. record. 1988, we'll remember that day well. I think yeah. it's a record to lose four in a row. <laughs> really? I don't think there's a team well, that's It's amazing how you have times. those great teams with, you know, the two greatest players of all time on, on a junior team and, you, and go to well, four, four straight losses in a Minto Cup. You win the BCs and then the fifth try, I believe it was. Yeah, fifth try. 1988 uh, yeah. at Memorial Arena, uh, when it, finally winning it in your, in your senior year. Of, and, of your and, and, and that was, you know, that was a, a, you know, amazing year because it was the same year we won our first national championship at Syracuse. Right. So we did that, then came back here and won a Minto Cup, and, you know, things just took off from there. And, and How about Man Cups? Man Cups have been uh, unbelievable, too, to come back to Victoria. 97? 99. 97, 99. Yeah. yeah, it was tough to win out east. Was it? Yeah. Say. You know, never could quite get it done. You know, these Victoria teams, you know, close, but you, you know, yeah. couldn't get it done. So, but, uh, you know, 99 was a highlight coming, having my brother back on the team. Yep. You know, 97 beating him was, was fun too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Your MVP in 99 as well? Uh, yeah, 97, 99. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so then you go mm -hmm. to the to the NLL and uh, and you know uh, start playing the the pro game. Uh -huh. Talk about that. The highlights, the years, the low <laughs> lights, the low pay, the you know just just the whole thing because you know what you know. Had you been the greatest hockey player of all time, oh you probably wouldn't even be talking to us right now. You'd be on your yacht down in uh, uh, down in the Caribbean. But you know, talk talk about that about all those years of pro lacrosse. You know the. The, you know, the wages you guys made, the, you know, the oh, rough, I, I always call it the... semi-pro because every, everybody had jobs, right. including myself. I was, uh, had a couple jobs, ended up being a college coach, assistant women's lacrosse coach at the University of Maryland for nine, ten years, and during that time playing pro lacrosse, and it was, um, you know, it was a lot of fun, you know. It was just like playing uh, for the Shamrocks, uh, taking a little bit to the next level and travel around the country yeah. playing, and and you know to develop the game so that young players can come in now and, and have an opportunity to make a little bit of money and 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 a lot of these young kids are kind of playing full time they play indoor they play yeah. outdoor yeah. and uh, field, yeah uh, and they take a few years after college or, or after high school and say i'm going to be a pro lacrosse player for a while and, and spend a few years of their youth doing that and it 
it's just a lot of fun, you know, getting out there with the guys and competing and, and uh, you know, always playing to win. You were around, you know, for all those years, Cleve, and, and, and tell me what impact you think the, the Gate brothers uh, had on uh, the youth of Victoria and growing the game here on Vancouver Island. Well, I, you know, box lacrosse was the big sport in right. Victoria. Now you see field almost as, I mean, all these kids going down and getting NCAA scholarships. Yeah. Uh, that's the directly result of, of these two guys, uh, uh, Gary and Paul, uh, going down. They really blazed the trail for field in this, it, not on, but in Canada in general, because field was not a really big, uh, it's always thought of as an American thing, you know, especially when you guys well, are going up. It actually up started in, after the 78 World Championships. Yeah. The Canadian team won the Worlds, and they got some Huge funding, over the and Chris American Hall thing. came yeah. back, and yeah. they organized Victoria Field Lacrosse, and I know my dad got involved. And yeah, and the sea spray started yeah. it, and then these guys carried it on, and uh, now uh, field is as much a tradition mm -hmm. in, in this in these parts in BC as as boxes. So uh, that's I think that's one of the the key things that Gary and Paul did was uh, uh, create uh, uh, a pathway that is separate from box for lacrosse in this province and in this country and, and that field and that can lead to a lot of different things. Well, uh, and and yeah. scholarships and your well, that's the biggest thing. The whole NCAA angle is uh, key for kids in lacrosse and it gives you a chance to get. Uh, your schooling paid for and play yeah, an NCAA absolutely. sport, right. which is uh, what a lot of kids up here want to do. Highlights of uh, watching uh, Gary and Paul play, uh, you know, all, all over the years, and you know, man cups as well, and, and everything else. Well, you know, I, it's um, you could play a sport, but very few people revolutionize the sport, you know, and and, and these two guys did. It's it's hard to imagine uh, uh, people who have an impact on a sport like they did. I mean, the Airgate, every, I mean, yeah, uh, Airgate, when, when exactly. is uh, lacrosse ever in Sports Illustrated? I mean, these guys brought this sport to a level where even SI was taken notice, right? And yeah. so there's Syracuse years. Uh, and in Canada, I mean, the, the national headlines they made coming out of Victoria were, were just amazing. You know, it's, uh, it's one thing to be a great in a sport. It's quite another to revolutionize a sport. And you think of the people who actually did that. It's Bobby Orr, what he did for defensemen in hockey. Right. And nobody even thought of bringing the puck up like he did. You know, that, and that's revolutionizing a sport. Right. Right. Um, uh, Michael Jordan, in many ways, just uh, being the complete all-around player, could play virtually everywhere, revolutionize how basketball is played. And Gary and Paul revolutionized how, how lacrosse is played. And, and I don't think you can have any greater impact on a sport than to have people say, you changed the nature of the sport. Wow, you're getting your tires pumped up here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good today. Holy this cow. Good. Oh, Gary, lady. thanks so much for Thank coming you. in. Appreciate you coming in. Cleaver, thanks, Jeff. that's a pleasure. Yep. My new co-host, maybe. Yeah, yeah right. He's yeah, just, hang just hanging on yeah, my yeah. thread right now. <laughs> that is it. That's the sports cage and another edition of Game On here on Check 6. And, of course, we all know it. Up and down the island and across the province, your local sports fix each and every Monday night at 7 and 10.30. It's Game On. <laughs>